Hi everyone, Peter here from Flow High Performance, and in this video, we'll be exploring how to program plyometric training for field sport athletes. First, we need to establish what plyometric training is. Plyometric training refers to exercises which have a high reliance on the stretch shortening cycle for performance. The stretch shortening cycle is the action of the muscles and tendons during movements which involve a rapid eccentric than concentric contraction. For example, when we walk, the foot contacts the ground, causing the calf muscles to eccentrically absorb force, then there is a temporary isometric contraction before the calf then propels the foot off the ground with a concentric contraction. As the muscle contracts, it pulls on the tendon, causing it to spring like an elastic band. This elastic recoil gives the athlete additional propulsive force with each step. The stretch shortening cycle can occur at slow speeds, like when we walk, but it becomes more and more important as the speed of movement increases. As we transition from a walk, to a jog, to a run, to a sprint, we get more and more elastic recoil from the tendon. This means that we get more propulsive force from the elastic tendons with each step. So essentially, plyometric training generally refers to exercises on the fast velocity side of the spectrum where we want to get maximum elastic propulsion from the tendon. Here are some examples of plyometric exercises, ranging from slower to faster velocities. First, we have unloaded box jumps, which will have the slower speeds and longest ground contact times. Then we have depth jumps, where the focus is on maximal jump height. Next, we have weighted hurdle jumps. And lastly, we have pogo hops, which will involve very short contact times. So what benefit does plyometric training have for field sport athletes? Plyometrics can help athletes become more efficient at using the stretch shortening cycle. This means that the muscle can contract with more precise timing to maximally utilize the stretch and recoil of the tendon. This generally has the highest transfer to maximum velocity sprinting as this is where the stretch shortening cycle is used at its maximum potential. Now that we understand what plyometric training is and how it can benefit athletic performance, let's now establish how it can be implemented into a program. During a mesocycle in the early preparation period of an athlete's year, slower velocity plyometrics should be used to emphasize force output. This refers to exercises which have longer ground contact times and may use some external load. Here is an example of how a mesocycle may look in the early preparation period. The depth jump has been selected using an additional load of 5 kilos in the form of a weight vest. This exercise will involve long contact times, making it more reliant on force output and less reliant on the elastic tendon properties. We can see here that the reps and load remain the same for the 4 week mesocycle, while the number of sets increase each week. This is because during the early preparation period of training, athletes generally want to accumulate volume. We can also see here that one session uses bilateral depth jumps, while the other session uses unilateral depth jumps. This is one strategy to undulate training throughout the week, and to ensure that we're getting both unilateral and bilateral training. During a mesocycle in the later preparation period of the year, moderate velocity plyometrics should be used to involve more of a reliance on the elastic tendons. The exercises used in this mesocycle should have moderate ground contact times. Here is an example of how a mesocycle may look in the late preparation period. Depth jumps have been used again, this time without any additional load. This will mean that ground contact times are shorter than the previous mesocycle, and there will be more reliance on the elastic tendons and slightly less reliance on force. We can see here that the sets remain the same in the mesocycle apart from week 1, as it is an unloading week. However, the number of reps increases each week as a form of progression. Once again, the first session uses the bilateral form, while the second session uses the unilateral form. During a mesocycle at a time when the athlete wants to be in absolute peak condition, fast velocity plyometrics should be used to train for maximal efficiency of the elastic tendon stretch and recoil. The exercises used in this mesocycle should have fast ground contact times for maximum transfer to running performance. Here is an example of how a mesocycle may look in a peaking period. Pogo hops have been selected as an exercise with no additional load. This exercise involves very short contact times, 
making it highly reliant on the elastic tendons for performance, and much less reliant on force production. We can see here that the sets decrease over the mesocycle, while reps increase. This is because during a peaking mesocycle, we want the athlete to reduce fatigue, so volume is reduced by decreasing the sets, while intensity increases via increasing the number of reps performed. And as we can see here, the session undulates with the first being bilateral and the second being unilateral. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already.